Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about solving systems of linear equations with not two variables, but with three variables. So let's get started. I think this section is pretty cool. It's like a little puzzle you get a piece together. Uh, let's do one of the problems to show you how it works. Okay, some terms and definitions. A linear equation in three variables is written in the form ax plus by plus cz is equal to d, where a, b, and c are all not zero. If a was zero, <clears throat> then we would have a linear equation in two variables, not in three. So a, b, and c all have to be non-zero numbers. All right. So an example would be 2x minus y plus 6z is equal to negative 4. So again, 2x minus y plus 6z is equal to negative 4. Now a solution of a system is going to be an ordered triple whose coordinates make each equation true. So before when we had a system of linear equations in two variables, uh, we had what's called an ordered pair. And the ordered pair was a set of coordinates uh, on a two-dimensional plane, xy plane, that made each of the equations true. So now we're dealing with three variables, and we have an ordered triple x, y, z. Those coordinates represent a spot in space uh, and a coordinate in space, and those that coordinate makes each of the equations true. So in this case, it would be a an intersection point of each of the three lines. Uh, brought about by the three variables. Okay, so again, a linear equation in three variables is written in the form ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. a, b, and c are all not zero. A solution of the system is an ordered triple whose coordinates make each equation true. And by the way, you don't have to have a solution uh, for each system of the equations. Sometimes there's going to be no solutions. Okay, so let's, or no solution. Let's move on. And let's go through a sample problem. So we've got three equations with three variables. Uh, equation number one, 2x minus y plus 6z is equal to negative 4. Equation number two, 6x plus 4y minus 5z is equal to negative 7. And equation number three is negative 4x minus 2y plus 5z is equal to 9. And we're going to use the elimination method that we learned, not substitution, but elimination in this case, at least in order to start the reduction of the number of variables that we have and then to solve for one variable. So remember, the strategy here is to reduce the system of equations down to um, a value that we get for one variable. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to rewrite the system of three equations as two linear systems with three variables. So that means we're, we need to select two equations uh, twice <clears throat> from the above three systems. So the possible combinations are going to be one, equation one and two, equation one and three, and equation two and three. And we need to choose two of those sets of equations. And then we're going to eliminate one variable from each of the two systems. We can choose the pair, and we can also choose which variable we're going to eliminate. All right, so I, I've already decided just and based on looking at the two systems, that I want to eliminate the y variable. And I'm going to do that by combining or working with the two pairs, equation 1 and 2, and then also equation 2 and 3. So let's get to work. And we're going to follow the same process we did with elimination with a system of two variables, but now we're just using three. With two variables, remember we were trying to reduce <clears throat> the number of variables down to one. And in the first step in this case, we're trying to reduce the number of variables from three to two. Okay, so let's get started. Let's take a look at what we're gonna do in order to get the solution for this system. Okay, so equation one and equation two. So what I've done is I've set out the two pairs of equations, equation one and two. So one, <clears throat> I've changed by multiplying that equation by a constant of 4. So remember, if you take a look, I'm going to go back to equation 1, 2x minus y plus 6z is equal to negative 4. 
I multiplied every term by 4, so I get 8x minus 4y plus 24z is equal to negative 16. Okay, so now I'm going to take that value and I'm going to put it into the first line here, and that's equation 1 multiplied by 4. <clears throat> then I'm going to take equation number 2 straight up. It's 6x plus 4y minus 5z is equal to negative 7. And I'm going to add these two together to eliminate the y variable. So I get 14x plus 0y <clears throat> plus 19z is equal to negative 23. 14x plus 0y plus 19z is equal to negative 23. I'm just going to check to make sure that that's right. Okay, I've double checked my answer and I find out that I did in fact do the addition correctly. So let's move on to the second pair. I've selected uh, pair uh, equation 2 and 3. And in this case, I've multiplied equation 3 by 2. So let's go back. And remember, I'm trying to eliminate the same variable for both pairs of equation. I've decided that that variable is going to be y. So in this, the first pair, I've eliminated y. And the second pair, I'm going to eliminate y again. So I'm going to end up with two sets of equations with two variables now. Uh, so let's go back and let's take a look at equation number 3. Equation number 3, negative 4x minus 2y plus 5z is equal to 9. <clears throat> I'm going to multiply every term by 2, and I get negative 8x minus 4y uh, plus 10z is equal to 18. Negative 8x minus 4y plus 10z is equal to 18. So negative 8x minus 4y plus 10z is equal to 18. I've rewritten that here on the bottom of the second pair of equations. Now I'm going to add those two equations together. And I get negative 2x plus 0y plus 5z is equal to 11. All right, so I'm going to pause just to double check. And the common mistake is to go too quickly in these sets of equations. If you make a small error here, you're going to wind up getting the incorrect answer. And it's very easy to multiply one of the terms incorrectly or add them incorrectly. Even though it's a simple function, we tend to go very quickly through those simple addition and multiplication processes. So I just want to make sure that I've got the right answer. I'm going to pause for a second. I'll be right back. OK, I've double checked my answer. And I see that I did, in fact, uh, add and subtract correctly. So now I have two. I started with a, uh, three uh, equations and three variables. And now I've reduced that to two equations with two variables. And we know what to do when we have two equations with two variables. Um, we can use substitution at this point, um, or we can move on to elimination. Our next step is to eliminate another variable from these two uh, equations. So we're going to combine these two equations using elimination. We're going to eliminate one of the variables. And then we're going to end up with just one variable left, and we're going to solve for that one variable. So I look at these, here's the result, it's not handwritten. I look at the result of the first system and the second system. Here's my result, and now I need to figure out which variable I'm going to eliminate. And I think looking at this, the easiest way to uh, handle this <clears throat> is going to be to eliminate the x variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the second result from uh, the system number 2 by 7. So that's going to give me, and I'm going to eliminate the x variable, it's going to give me negative 14x uh, plus 0y plus 35z is equal to 77. All right, and then we're going to combine these two <clears throat> equations, and we're going to eliminate the x variable, and we're going to end up with a value for z. So let's go ahead and do that. I have negative 14x. Uh, plus 35z is equal to 77. And I'm going to combine, I'm going to solve for the two systems and two variables uh, using either substitution or elimination. I'm going to use elimination in this case. So when I add these two together, I get 0x plus 54z is equal to 54. Now 54z is equal to 54 it gives me z equal to 1. All right, so I started with three equations. I use the process of elimination combining two pairs of equations to reduce the number of variables down to two. Then I use those 
resultant two systems that combine those two systems or two equations in one system to reduce <clears throat> the number of variables down to one I solve for that one variable. Now I have to go back up the chain in order to solve for the other two variables. So I know that z is equal to one. Now I can take that result of z is equal to one and substitute that back into either equation here to solve for x. Okay, so if z is equal to one, now I have 14, I'm gonna use the first equation, 14x plus 19 times one, which is 19, is equal to 23. Or 14x plus 19 is equal to, excuse me, negative 23. I'm gonna subtract 19 from both sides to get 14x is equal to negative 42. So x is going to be equal to negative three. So now I've solved for two variables. Z is one, x is negative three. My last remaining variable is gonna be y, and I can go back to the original, one of the original three equations, uh, substitute negative three in for x and one for z to solve for the remaining variable for y. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. And then we'll be done with this particular section. All right, so I'm just gonna step back for those of you who are following along from my class um, to review step number three again. There's some words that you need to fill in as part of your notes. So step number three, we're gonna substitute the value found in step number two into one of the equations from step number one to solve for the other remaining variable. All right, so we're solving now for x. We had 14x plus zero y plus 19z is equal to uh, negative 23. We found that z was equal to one, which means that when we substitute one in for z, I'm gonna end up with 14x plus 19 is equal to negative 23. So 14x is equal to negative 42, x is equal to negative three. And so now we have again, z is equal to one, x is equal to negative three. And we're gonna take those values and we're gonna put them back into either one of the three equations. And I've, in this case, I've selected equation number one to solve for the remaining variable y. So step number four is use the values found from step number two and three. We found z first in step two, and then x in step three, into equation before we had any of the steps, just from step zero, to solve for the remaining variable, which is y in this case. So I selected equation number one. Again, you can select equation two or three, it doesn't matter. If z is equal to one and x is equal to negative three, then if I substitute in negative three for x and one for z, I get two times negative three minus y plus six times one is equal to negative four. Or negative six minus y plus six is equal to negative four. Or y is equal to negative four. All right, so now I have my, uh, my solution. And remember, I called that an ordered triple. All right, so my solution is three, a set of three values, x, y, and z. It's my ordered triple. And I'm just going through <clears throat> these slides here. Okay, so my ordered triple z is gonna be x, y, z. So we found that uh, x in this case is negative three. We just discovered that y is equal to negative four. And we knew that z is equal to one. So this is gonna be my result. All right, now if you obtain a false equation such as zero is equal to one, then the system has no solution. So there are no points of intersection between the three lines. If you obtain an identity such as zero is equal to zero, then the system has an infinite number of solutions. So those lines end up being the same lines. They coincide. All right, so again, if you obtain a false equation, from the systems uh, such as zero is equal to one, the system has no solutions. If you obtain an identity such as zero is equal to zero, then the system has infinite solutions. All right, that's it for this edition of Otten Math. Why don't you come and join us for a practice problem or two. We're gonna go through this entire process again for at least a problem. Um, and again, I love these equations. They're fun to solve. Uh, it takes a little bit more effort than just a system of equations in two variables. Uh, but if you know what you're doing and you take your time working through it, it ends up being a very simple process. All right, see you soon.